l'histoire des instituts en Europe et ailleurs. So we're going now to right. We're going to a lawyer who has a transnational experience and who can talk about the dimension of law as uh, to overcome some difficulties that we might find in the problem of uh, conserving cultural goods. So let's listen to Gabriele D'Amico Soggetti. Hello, everyone. I would just like to tell the translators that I will read the first page and a half in English, and then I'll speak uh, ad lib. So I'll ask you to, to change over. Eminences and Excellences, Reverend Superiors, Distinguished Professors and Guests. Already the title of my intervention toward a transnational action plan for the ecosystemic management of European Catholic heritage touches a series of themes which I will try to summarize in my intervention. European Catholic tangible and intangible heritages are at risk. From a scientific point of view, the magnitude of the problem cannot be overestimated. My preliminary assumption is that the unifying aspiration of Vatican, diocesan, religious, lay, secular, institutional, and scientific stakeholders is not just a patch solution, but an integrated policy capable of transforming the weaknesses of overabundance of goods as Monsignor Caballo mentioned earlier, uh, into an asset for second evangelization as extroverted dialogue and inclusive cooperation ad intra and ad extra, referring again to two categories used by Cardinal Rivasi earlier, and for the promotion of integral human development. Thus, implementing the famous invitation of John Paul II to, I quote, open wide for Christ the vast fields of culture, civilization, and development." End of quotation. My argument is that moving from this problem toward its solution requires an integrated crisis response in the form of a transnational action plan, promoted at all levels of the Catholic Church, thus reducing the problem of fragmentation, involving the most relevant networks of stakeholders, Partnered by civil authorities at the local, as well as the national, European level, up to UNESCO, and centered on the enhancement of the expertise and creativity of young people, and especially of young heritage professionals. And I will explain why. Partially, it's well known to all of you. Uh, uh, crisis response, which needs to be targeted on the Catholic Church needs to have as referee the Pope, and the Pope is very keen on that. We all remember his speech in Cyprus. We all remember last week, event with young people. But also in scientific terms, young heritage professionals are crucial. Strategically, uh, so if you want, if I can use an image, I'm a little bit like the woman in the house that loses one coin and wants them all. My problem is that I don't want any part of Catholic heritage to get lost. So that's why I say we need an integrated, overarching strategy that can enable us to hope that no piece of that heritage is lost, no talent of the smallest congregation, of the smallest convent gets lost. Strategically, I pro so strategically means that, as I will explain later on, I've done a series of analysis. One is a network analysis of the Catholic Church and what can be done, what's feasible strategically. I propose that first, the most effective way to design and implement such a crisis response is to use the interest of Cardinal Ravazzi for the internationally recognized uniqueness of the experience and skills gathered by the specialized forces of Cultural Heritage Command of the Italian Armed Forces, the Carabinieri Nucleo Tutela Patrimonio Culturale, which was mentioned earlier also by Don Franceschini. To trigger a structured cooperation between his office and the Italian Minister of Culture, Honorable Franceschini. So we go step by step. We start from Rome, Italy, Europe, UNESCO, one single action plan. Second, I propose to frame such cooperation within the 2015 memorandum, 
the problem of internationalization, signed by, at the time, Italian Prime Minister, Honorable Gentiloni, and at the time, Secretary General of UNESCO, Irina Bokova, which, starting from the international value of heritage, of the heritage unit of Carabinieri, aimed at creating an international task force. We need a crisis response, we need a task force, it needs to be international. Mostly known as the Blue Helmets of Culture. Third, I propose to develop such constructive participatory crisis response by exploiting the potentials of the action platform powered by UNESCO, which called the Global Coalition Unite for Heritage, is the institutional framework already where the memorandum was placed, it was signed in 2015, using it to activate in the heritage sector the 2021 agreement between Pope Francis, the ecumenical patriarch Bartolomeo, and the actual director general of UNESCO, Mrs. Audrey Azoulay, for the creation of a UNESCO chair at the Lateran University. So what I'm telling you is that I'm giving you a series of facts, memorandum, protocols, institutions, which are the result of a network analysis, situational analysis, context analysis, which I conduct, and saying strategically, we need to do that, that, and that. Um, now I stop with the reading and, and I switch to Italian. Thank you. This will continue. Because I'm going to speak ad lib to some up the things I said before, and what I've said will help to go into do my summary. So I want to refer to what Bishop Caballo said concerning the cultural heritage. My research began like that and highlighted how the present notion of culture heritage is particularly interesting for the Catholic Church because on the one hand it's founded on the hybridization between cultural studies and environmental studies, the concept of cultural ecology allowing us to better understand what Pope Francis says in Laudato Si about culture and at the same time discovering this is part of the heritage of the church if we consider what the Jesuits said from Father Arupi in the 70s and 80s on culture and deculturalization, we find something similar to what Freeman, what earlier Cardinal Alvis said that our mentality is changing. There is a deculturalization as well as inculturalization phenomenon. A second important aspect concerning the contemporary notion of heritage is that it is unitary. It poses the subject of what is the heritage of the Catholic Church in its unitary nature. Concerning this, I'm going speedily referring to what Professor Auger, the previous professor, said about the folklorization of the Christianity of Christianity and the problem of patrimonialization. The categories of international law today which say that patrimony can be tangible or intangible and the tangible are built and movable and immovable objects the intangibles are musical traditions, folkloristic traditions. This is all fine, but at least as I understood personally, these are not sufficient to understand what the heritage of the church truly is. We, we are in danger of folklorizing everything to understand better, and I'll sum up. I'll conclude, and on the, with the basis of my analysis, we must include another two elements which are part of the specific nature of Christianity. The first is faith. Faith is an encounter. And if this is true, then we, the words that were earlier said by Professor Trentini on the concept of empathy, we understand it better. To maintain a charism is to speak of the founder as someone, even though they lived 600 years ago has touched us to whom we have met. The second aspect is the treasure of faith. 
meaning in the history of the church, all those questions that we find today as yet unresolved in heritage studies. Well, let's give some practical examples. Studies on heritage say that the, you must involve the, the community. This was unknown before. And well, I've had this, what is the community? How do we define a community? What's the difference between a community, a group, a tribe that wants to propose its fixed identity in its own way, as was said before, that people might have a fixed identity? These questions are still unresolved. If we looked in the treasure of the church, there we find the answer. The community is different from the group because at the heart of it, there's a search for truth. So it's a congregation, as Benedict said, and Cardinal Ratzinger in Semper Reformanda, quoting Buber, at the central living center of the community. I'm just giving these few examples. I could give so many more, but I want to be practical. Uh, we're, we're being at service calls us to be practical. The second. I've continued, therefore, with the economic analysis, the tools for project development. Bishop Caballo said earlier, spoke earlier about the need for charismatic plans, emphasis on plans. How can we make these plans from a methodological point of view? How can we achieve them? I am inspired in my research in this context by project cycle management for development in territories and situations which have been thought of particularly in view of development and which might need to be tweaked a little bit, corrected a little bit. We need to correct our notion of heritage so that they can be authentically linked to the Catholic Church, bearing in mind the difference there is between the notion of sustainable development United Nations and the vision of human, de integral human development of the church. This difference must be borne in mind in using these tools, but nonetheless, they are very useful. My successive work then was that of asking myself what the solution could be. The studies on heritage in and on heritage and world heritage in particular, a premise for those who don't know is that there are thousands of sites which might be UNESCO sites that have an, a central organism, the Committee for World Heritage, which for decades now has been monitoring the best practices and dynamics. So therefore the church needs to know that people have been doing a lot of work on this for years. And what have they obtained as a conclusion in 2007? They spoke, I quote, the conservation of heritage without the active engagement and participation of the reference community is destined to fail. We're talking, they're talking about synodality. In 2002, the very same conclusion was reached, and I come into the juridical tools which is the first conclusion I would like to bring to your attention. The same conclusion came from a notary in Milan who was, uh, who was working in Italy at the time. And I'll sum it up. He says, I get out of my taxi. I look at the dome of the of the cathedral. In uh, yes, we, we could never do another one of those. Let's help to keep it up. Well, to keep the dome. So this sums up the efforts to be made regarding her her cultural heritage. What does this mean? The participation is necessary because civil and religious communities worked together in those days when it was built. Pilgrim, pilgrims, the, the crafts, guilds, everything was working in synergy. We need juridical tools that enable this to happen. And from there emerges a great intuition of the participatory foundations. We'd need four hours to talk about this. I'll just sum it up. Each order, each or religious order has many foundations. The scientific pro 
is to measure the quality of the structural management structures, the quality of the participation in which they engaged. Once you've done that, you would be able to unblock a lot of heritage. Because if I understand it well, the subject of the church, also when you're talking about stopping the use, we hope that we'll never be selling uh, goods to which they have the right from a Western point of view, Christian point of view, that we could do the right to use and abuse things, but always to use and never to abuse. Therefore, I can never completely sell something, but I would like to participate together with others and I do, I put them on a beautiful object there, and other people put their professional help in order to to maintain integrity and authenticity. One last thing, if I may. I am moving towards the conclusion now. Uh, I did an analysis of the situation of the network. I was interviewing in the convents. I was, you know, gathering data uh, through the interviews made to the bishops uh, that I just placed on a database uh, in order to look at the situation as a whole. And I was able to identify that there are certain problems of fragmentation and lack of synergy and dialogue uh, that are mainly the problem. In my conclusion. So uh, I believe that in order to think of a policy or a, uh, a policy that is uh, uh, one size fits it all with within the church uh, wouldn't help uh, to safeguard uh, the heritage uh, in its wholeness. And this is why it's important to have a strategy that, that would allow for participation. This is why I connected myself to that example about Milan that uh, is connected with Europe, uh, the whole of Europe, and also the UNESCO uh, is very important for us uh, in Italy. Uh, we don't really know much about this. But then uh, we need to get the, the, the youth involved uh, as uh, a part, uh, as our, as part of this part Partnership and not, not as a tool to solve of our solve our problems, but as a way to find the solution together and the solution to be based on the human person. And I stop here because uh, my time is up.